I'll call the select board, uh, Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meeting to order at 4.35 on Friday the 21st of October, 2022. I make a motion that the percentage um, be 25%. So the, the motion is, um, this is discussing in article 15, which is the acts of 1935. Um, we had a hearing the other night about um, the amount of money or the, the kind of the split or what our language was going to be between um, the town and, and kind of sewer user fees for capital projects. And this is all going forward and not looking backwards. So any project going forward and the motion is to um, change the language so that it is um, the town would be um, a partner in participation um, up to 25% and that that would be voted for um, at town meeting, depending on the project. So anywhere from zero to 25%, but no more than 25%. The current language is, you know, 25% up to 76, 67%. So we would, um, now that we have actually, as, as Tim said, now that we have a mature um, plants and a mature system, um, generally would be at 25%, uh, up to 25%. So I will, um, Second that motion for discussion. And I just want to state, I just for myself, personal choice would be to uh, make it um, flat 25% or, um, but I, I'm, I don't think I'll have a motion to support that. So um, anyone else want to speak on the issue and then call the question or? No, I no, so um, yeah, let's just vote. Okay. So just to clarify, we're going to be voting to say that disposal the town shall pay semicolon not more than twenty five percent. Period. That's in the first paragraph of section five. Up to up to uh, yeah, well, up to or not more than it's the same thing. It's just expressed differently. So, what language would you like to use? I don't know. I'm not as educated as Tim. So I would say up to is clear to me. Okay, if that's clear, uh, what do you say, I Trevor? Um, I think that I think Lisa's good. already vetted not more than. But, yes. Okay, then we'll yeah. stick with that one. Well, then that's, that's fine. fine. So does everyone understand what we're voting on? All right. All those all those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, no. It's not that I don't support it. I just think you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, I'm going to open the finance committee meeting at 4:35. Um, all of the finance committee members are present, so we can just vote instead of having a roll call vote. Um, so the plan for tonight: we have several articles that we haven't reviewed. Huh? Well, she's not up there. So, okay, so she's not present. Yeah, Correct. she's not present. Meant that we were all no, 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 the we're all, yeah. those of us who are here are here. Right. <laughs> None not, of us okay. are virtual. Okay. <laughs> How's that for clarity? Um, so the plan tonight, we only have Brenda until about 5.15. So we're gonna start with stuff that we really need Brenda's input on, and then we'll move to the library, and then we'll move to the rest of it. Um, so I wanted to start with a small discussion of free cash. Um, you should have two handouts. One says, to say draft finance committee assessment of special town meeting warrant, um, which I emailed out, I don't know, probably late last night. And the other one is a list of certified free cash for every year for the past, like back to 2011. So you can see what that amount is. Um, and so I didn't email that. No, that that's in that little it's packet in right there. Sorry. So it's in there somewhere. It should yeah. be the last sheet. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know if you had a chance to. This is still very draft, but this is what I'm writing up to put into the that'll be handed out with the warrant on Monday. Um, in, and we'll go over this. Um, but input is quite welcome. So um, for articles one through 14, the funding requests here total $351,401. The church building will be 
out of either capital stabilization or general stabilization, not out of free cash. The rest of them is free cash. So that's 161,401 out of free cash. Um, and you probably remember, but free cash this year, we spent down more than we have typically. Um, purposefully, we decided that that was what we wanted to do. And we ended up with certification at a million ninety two nine eighty nine um, for FY23. And if you look at your list of free cash, 2015 was lower than that, but every other year, 2011 on has been more than that. So we're at the low end of where we've certified free cash and we're spending another $160,000 out of free cash, which maybe is okay, but I just want us to think through that. Um, Brenda, do you want to comment? Um, you pretty much covered it. The only thing I wanted to point out is that it appears that we're going to pass over, um, I think it's, I can't remember which article number it is, but it's the one in regards to the senior housing study. So it actually, um, if we were to approve all of these without that one, we'd be spending 157,401 out of free cash. And so what's going, what it leaves for us is 935,588. That is low. Um, it makes it a little more difficult to conduct business in the spring, but we just have to remember that it's just going to be less money that we're going to have for either to put into capital stabilization or to do capital projects. Yeah, go ahead. Um, last night at the senior housing, uh, the reason why we're passing over is we got the neighborhood grant that will cover some of the site feasibility expenses. So we don't need that $4,000. Anybody, there's no motion or anything. Does anybody want to discuss or make a recommendation on this language or anything? Okay. Um, okay, so with that in mind, let's start with Article 10, which is the union um, whatever approval. We've already reviewed this and approved it, but at that point, we thought there was no financial there was no dollar increase to the budget. And since then it has been um, reviewed. Brenda, do you want to comment on this? Um, sure. So uh, we did do a calculation uh, that exceeded the 10,000, I believe. Here's my, my thought on it is the reason it exceeded what we thought might be enough to cover it is that there is overtime that's budgeted for each of the highway employees for things like um, tree damage or um, snow and ice, you know, those kind of projects that uh, go are, are above and beyond their work. So when you figured in the new rates with the overtime, it brought us to an increase of 18,401 instead of something below 10. So we had already budgeted 10,000 of that. So the increase is 8,401. Um, right. Actually, we don't have, do we have a motion on this? I think we are, didn't we already recommend it? We, we already recommended it. I guess here's the question. We recommended it with no dollar value increase. Now that there's a dollar value increase, do we want to revisit it? 10, it's on page five. I move that we, Recommend Article 10. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion? Can we not spend this? No. No. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. No further discussion. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Five, zero, zero. Okay, the next one I want to take on is article number eight, which is the senior housing. Um, this is going to be passed over, so we don't need to vote that. Right, that. the expenses will be picked up by the neighborhood compact. It was yep, actually, we okay. just got the quote and it was almost yeah, double. Right. We don't need to talk and about it. So article be. seven is the next one. That's the church building. Um, do we have a motion for article seven? I so move. We have a second. I'll second it. Okay. All right. Brenda, do you want to comment on this at all? 
or anybody? Casey? Um, I guess the only thing to, to comment here is we're talking about taking this out of capital stabilization and not out of free cash. If we were to take it out of free cash, we'd be leaving too little on the table to deal with town meeting in the spring. So the idea was to take it out of a stabilization account that corresponds with the kind of work that we're doing, which is a capital project. Um, therefore, the capital stabilization. And I'm I'm sure Casey's willing to talk more about this than I, you know, I, that's about as much as I know. This was the source that the board had discussed. Um, we would. You know, we discussed whether it should be capital or general stabilization. And if the board wants to chime in with an opinion, this is what what was reflected from my understanding of their conversations. It was literally it's literally stabilizing the church and preserving further deterioration. So we felt it was a capital project. It is capital. Project. Yep. Um, and CIPC reviewed this. Um, I believe. Yeah, we did. We so um, CIPC recommends this. Yep. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can I ask a question? Yeah, go Are we for there it. Yet? Good. Yeah. We're open to discussion. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious, because um, a little while ago, I think I saw something about 100, and then it went up to 150 somewhere in the last few weeks. And this is more of a process question. But for something like this, where is the actual number coming from? Like, mm -hmm. is there some kind of a an estimate that's been done by a contractor because there's a lot of language in here about yep. sort of you know we're seeing a dramatic rise in costs or there's every likelihood that the actual cost would be higher eating into the original appropriation i'm just wondering if you know those things we did all those rules and things, are, are we expecting more do we expect more details for a request like this or is it just um it, this honestly makes me very it, uncomfortable because the the scope of the project is very nebulous and um, there is no okay. firm estimate for the work mm -hmm. there was a so a structural engineer looked at it and came through and made an estimate for what it would take to do a real structural assessment right yeah. you know he just walked through and yeah. then gave us um, here's what I think probably needs to be done. Here's what I think the cost would be for the engineering for that. And yeah. then we said, what's a rough ballpark of the estimate for the repairs? And he was like, eh, maybe 75,000 for this piece and whatever. So it, but it's, it's that sort that like that level of estimate. So the problem a... is that it, uh, it's gotta be done because the, it, sure. it's not... continuing to deteriorate and going through the winter without doing anything. Yeah, but I'm very uncomfortable with this. I think also it should be out of CPA funds, we, but we don't have the mechanism to do that. It is, yeah. I'm not talking, I, I, and I don't want my comment to be viewed as not um, thinking the work mm -hmm. should be done. It was more right. about being a new member, partly yeah. here, uh, and then also just those changing numbers that I just sort of saw as reviewing documents, and then I think, sorry, well, just no, almost please. done, yeah, and of then. Course. Um, you just so a structural engineer who is looking at stuff is not sort of an estimating person who would actually do the no. contract. No. This. Okay. So that that's all I was wondering. Yeah. So go ahead, John. Um, so yes, it is. It is a little bit up in the air because uh, I mean we know it's kind of around this, and you only get like a couple bites at the apple when you go for funding, right? So yeah. you've got special town meeting or annual town meeting, and um, if this was. Um, you know, if we had, if we had all kinds of time and could do a special meeting anytime we we have been talking about getting a solid, I mean, we obviously would have to get a solid quote before we do this and award the project, but to have that money set aside to be able to spend it on this, um, you only have a couple times a year that you can go and ask for it. And uh, I always thought it was at 150 and the number came in at one something at 110 or something like that. And, and we kind of at our meeting, we said, no, we said 150 because we worried that, and that may be too much and we might be able to just you know, not spend it. Yeah. Um, but we had put 150 aside and working with DA, they're going to help do some stuff. So we thought with the, you know, uh, mold remediation or maybe asbestos work that we were going to have to spend some of that as well. So we really just wanted to have enough set aside to be able to, when we got solid figures to fix that truss steeple and sure up the floor and try to keep the water out of the basement kind of thing. But I think there is more work to do for sure, Julie. And I, absolutely before we have solid numbers that we would spend. And I also want to 
mentioned that um, John Pachorek and he's invited Julian to go and actually look at what is the asbestos in the building. Is that what that's for? This Thursday. Yeah. This Thursday, oh. this great coming Thursday. So we will have a firmer number, but not before the meeting. Yeah, and we haven't had, like, we haven't gone down the route of getting a structural engineer to look at shoring up that truss that has the right. problem. Yeah, right. Is um, I don't know if this is a Brenda question or a Casey question. Is there a way to approve the 150 now and then work through the winter and then for next town meeting, like, put it, put it, like rescind that authority or something or whatever hasn't been spent and then do a new estimate with like a real estimate or? It wouldn't put on spec. I, mm -hmm. It would, but don't. if it's sitting there and it's approved, then um, then we'll say, you know, next, next September when we find something else broken, we're like, oh, well, we had this money authorized before for the church and this is on the church, let's use that. Um, I think, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. I wasn't sure my audio was working. Um, I guess the way I'm seeing this is if you approve this appropriation and we get to the end of the fiscal year and we say, okay, we have 125,000 left, but we're only gonna need 25,000 of that. We would just carry forward the 25,000 so then the 100,000 would go back into free cash. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see. Yeah. That makes sense. Whatever doesn't get spent, everyone wants to roll it out back in because we do use yeah. free cash to balance our budget. Yeah, we do. But we also say we had that money approved. Let's use it because we need it. Mm. <laughs> you know? so. I just wanted to make sure we had it kind of ready in case yeah, no. the stars aligned, but but they may, they may not with the way things move in molasses around here. <laughs> The, the problem is when you go to, re, you can only get CPA money when for the Springtown yeah. meeting, and then it's only available after July 1st. And is there any way to go back, Brenda, and cover it with CPA funds after you've spent it or anything? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think that would be something that the CPC we'll commission could find out. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Thank uh, you. Um, go ahead, John. Uh, I guess the plan is to use the space temporarily for a senior, for a senior center. Yes. Um, well, how much are we paying to rent the church? A thousand a month. Thousand, so, yeah, church is a thousand a month. So plus whatever they're renting in um, some some right. So maybe it would just be a lot cheaper to continue to rent than not spend $150,000 improving the church. Because I mean, what's the long range plan for the church? To use, long -range. Long -range. To use as- But this is temporarily. So I'll give you my, my opinion and everybody else can disagree with me. The, um, the long range goal is for town offices to be in the 1888 building. And then for the church to be upgraded so that that becomes the meeting space. So these meetings are in there and it gives you a big meeting area and um, and serve as a general community center. And a community Which center kind of So it's of gonna be thing. more than just this. Right, temporary so temporarily center. will be the senior center. The senior center will m likely end up someplace else eventually. And at that point, it'll become more of a meeting space that we need. Go ahead, Tim. And yeah, it. just- right. Thank you. The 150 figure is really for the structural issues that we need to preserve the building so that a year from now when out. it becomes clear what we're actually gonna do in the building, it's still standing. I mean, everybody has said it, it will stand through the winter, but um, we know we have to fix it and we'd be better to not risk. So um, the, the building has several possible uses and hopefully we'll figure that out soon. Okay, go ahead, skip. Skip on. I don't know if this is on or not. Uh, Doesn't so sound yeah. very on. <laughs> the, question's, the question's fairly simple. Uh -huh. You're taking this out of capital stabilization? Yes. So if the money is left over, where is it gonna go back to capital stabilization or free cash? Ooh, good question. 
Brenda? Brenda, the um, question is, if the money comes out of capital stabilization and we don't use it, does it go back into capital stabilization or does it go into free cash? It would go into free cash. You would have to vote it into capital stabilization from free cash. Okay, that makes sense. What you have done in the past. Okay, any further discussion? No, so what article are we? Seven. So article seven has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Five zero zero. All right. Next. Um, I guess let's do number one, contracted services. Do we have a motion? I move to approve that we recommend article one. Okay, do you have a second? Second that. Okay, okay. If, if you remember, we discussed this previously, but then we, we asked that they split out the description. It was just 60,000. 50,000 for engineering services and 10,000 for planning board. And we asked that they split that out. So we didn't vote it pending that change. So the, um, Casey, I, I think the way we ended up is that the actual warrant still has it just at 60,000. Yeah, the warrant yes. has it at 60,000, but the motion you have in front of you will, will split that out verbally right and that will be in the guide as well okay any discussion on this uh i was one of the folks that had a problem with how it was worded the last time and this um is better language as far as i'm concerned i just think it's three years from now we're going to forget that fifty thousand of contracted services is really per capital item think our numbers it's gonna it might distort our numbers in future years so i'm worried about that that's as my well. concern yep um, any other discussion um i apologize could you just rephrase that concern I well it, it's going to go into the budget line item of contracted services but fifty thousand is for engineering which is really it's it's really a capital item. So to have it as part of prior, ne next year, when we look at our budget, we're going to look at contract of services for 2023, if I have the right year, and it's going to say $60,000. And that's what we're going to be seeing. And we're going to say ne next year, we'll say, oh, we're going to be $50,000 less than 2023. And everybody's yeah, going to forget. Money we're yeah. Pardon? So it's just, we're going to lose sight of the fact that contracted services really not as high as it looks for 2023. I'll be on um, so, Brenda in the, um, I see you, Casey, hang on just a sec. Um, so Brenda, when you do all the little line items in the budget, this will be on its own little line item, right? We can certainly do that, absolutely. Which makes yeah. sense. Because yep. that would be very clear. Yes, yeah. it most definitely would. And Brenda, that will show for the, the period of years that John's concerned about, correct? Yes. Okay. Somebody else had their hand up and I forgot who. No, they answered you were just saying. I was just going to okay. remind you that you had this discussion about how it yeah. would be a line item designation and that could help you understand okay. the anomaly. Any further discussion? Why? Go ahead. I, I guess it's too late now, but I don't know why we didn't make two articles out of it. Efficiency. Yeah. It's too late. We're saving we ink. We're saving ink, John. I want to hit an article. <laughs> we don't need to hit our article. <laughs> yeah. Any further discussion? No? Okay. So <clears throat> Article 1 has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Extensions. 
think you should oppose. You're opposed. <laughs> 401. Got it. Um, last one is Article 6, which is the truck for wastewater treatment plant. We have a motion for this. I'll make the, a motion to recommend Article 6 is written. I'm going to bring it up. We have a second. Um, any discussion? Uh, this was reviewed and approved by uh, CIPC, mainly on the basis of this being a fair price for the kind of vehicle it'll be. I, I believe um, we uh, discovered that this was going to be a four-wheel drive vehicle, um, and you know, for a four four-wheel drive truck at forty thousand, ready to go. I, I don't think we're going to find anything better than this. And it's also a safety and um, oh. health issue. Yeah, no, so it almost goes without saying. It's 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 a it's a safety public health issue. Um, so yeah. And this will come out of wastewater treatment plant retained earnings. Uh, the enterprise funds, I think, right? Enterprise yeah. fund retained earnings. Yep. 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 Any other discussion? No. Okay, Article 6 had this been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, that passes unanimous, 500. Zero, zero. Um, okay, we are ready for the library now. Um, so would somebody like to make a motion on Article 18? Last page. Uh, I'll um I'll make a motion to uh, recommend that um, we uh, approve Article Eighteen as written. Okay. We have a second. I'll second that. Dave seconds. Okay. So um. I meant to say this before that. So we've already reviewed this article and voted on it and it did not pass. Um, but there's one key piece of information that has changed in our understanding since that vote. Um, and that's the debt limit issue. And so if you heard our discussion about the debt limit issue or do you want me to go through it again? No, I'll go through it again, okay. Um, so there is a legal debt limit of 5% of the, oh gosh, EQV, what the heck does that stand for? It, it's essentially the assessed value. value. I've lost the word suddenly. Um, equalized value, thank you. 5% um, of the equalized value. And if you get your, your it's a, a, a mass general law limit on the debt. But there are two sections within that law. There's section seven and section eight. Section eight does not fall under that 5% limit. So anything that is approved under section eight does not count towards your debt limit. Um, our sewer debt is section eight debt. There are specific things that you're allowed to put under section eight. They are um, sort of all large municipal services kinds of things like sewer, water, that kind of thing. Um, sewer is definitely on there. Brenda went and looked at the paperwork for the loans that we have. Um, and it, it does definitely say section eight. So that that debt definitely does not fall under um, our debt limit. If um, so, all that's left that we have debt outstanding on that's in the debt limit is the essentially 3 million for the highway garage and the little bit for the elementary school, um, right? So that's, and our debt limit is 40 million this year and will be 43 and a half million next year, nominally. Um, one more comment and then, no, and then you can go. Um, so if the library is approved, that would be 12 million. It would go on at the 12, full 12.3 million that is approved and then would rapidly decrease as you know the grant came in and we paid it off. Um, 
if if you sort of lay out the other projects we have planned, all of those are below the debt that debt limit. So the debt limit is no longer a concern that we should have in approving this. Um, everything else that we discuss stands. So the fact that we're borrowing a bunch of money and that we have to pay it off, and that you know there is a grant, but the grant doesn't cover the entire thing. There's a request for additional funds from the state. But um, we don't necessarily, there, there's no, absolutely no guarantee that we would get those. And as, my understanding is as of yet, there's no um, right. legislation or anything that even to be voted on. So it's not all that far along in the process. Um, Tim, you look like you yeah, want to I, that. I would be interested. Um, we were having a, dis a chat with Dan Pallotta earlier about, um, I think you're correct in, in looking at uh, what I see before me about the library borrowing, mm -hmm. you correctly identify that now that we've corrected the LEED certification um, benefit, uh, that it that the loan would actually be 6.25 something. Right. So yeah. um, are you, am I correct that we would, under no circumstances, be borrowing 12.3 million? We were not gonna borrow this at the beginning. It's gonna be a paid for as work proceeds and then whatever's left over is going to be borrowed at the end of the project when it's completed. So Brenda may want to comment on this, but that's the way we've done the sewer. We have borrowed however much we need to do the work we anticipate for the upcoming year. Brenda, do you want to comment, please? Yeah, re regardless of how much we end up borrowing, we still have to appropriate the entire 12.3 million as an authorized debt. And, you know, um, in most cases, you pay for all of that up front and then you get reimbursed later. I know the MBLC is doing it a little bit differently and then they're in that they're um, giving us the grant with certain mile markers. I get that, but we still have to approve the entire 12.3 million that still shows up as our debt. Now, at, at which time we complete the project, we can rescind the unauthorized or the unused uh, borrowing so that that can then be brought back down. Does that make sense? Yes, I think I understand the, the, the thing about the appropriation and authorization to spend up to 12.3. And then I think the article actually talks about um, provided that any grants, et cetera, gives language to this. My point is, um, in your um, in your outline here, you've got wastewater treatment plant. Now we know that we are going to borrow. We we, we have like twenty two million dollars worth of expenses, but on your project, your library project, uh, De Deerfield Debt and Library Project, you show us as like fifteen seven million that we're borrowing presently. So and then you list six point two million that's unused yet. So. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to understand, is it just a, an accounting thing that says, even though you know you're not going to spend 12.3 million, you have to say that you're going to spend 12.3 million, even though you're not going to borrow 12.3 million? Well, your project is 12.3 million. What happens if you don't get the grant or what happens if you don't get the, the donations? You, you still have to appropriate the entire 12.3 million and show that as authorized debt. No, I, I get that. Yeah. So. Uh, Obviously, this is just something I have trouble understanding, so forget about it. <laughs> we can talk later if you want, Tim. No, no, that's fine. Uh, I, the comment I wanted to make was I, I was hopeful that maybe the Finance Committee would just abstain from voting on this article because um, while we don't have concrete numbers, and the project amount is concerning, as, as well as not having a maintenance account is concerning. But I, I feel like there is movement, there is legislation being written, and there is possibility to get additional funding. And so I would was just wondering, since there is usually abstaining votes, um, that as a group, you would abstain so that you could let the library process move forward until the debt ballot when we have like the deadline to make a final decision on whether there are, you know, what is the money available? I mean, the possibility is there to get 4.3 more additional million dollars and not to have this project move forward just doesn't seem 
like a good thing. That's all. Because, you know, we know we have the ability to get 4 million or 3.9 million. There is a commitment to raise, uh, you know, donations of a, a certain amount. And that is not solid. I agree. But at least that has some, you know, impact. And then we have this potential to, uh, we're asking for 4.3 more additional million. Do, are we going to get it? I don't know. But it is our, you know, there is another senator in the eastern part of the state um, that is writing this legislation. So, I mean, there is support and movement that's not, that is beyond us than just us. And so I, I think, you know, time-wise, we should, we should give the library the opportunity to advocate for this project because it is an investment I, yeah. into the community. I, I, I do not support the finance committee not voting on this. This is a, a, a definite financial no, no, no. You can impact vote on, on it, the but town. Abstain. No, we're not going to abstain. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. Um, let, let me be clear about that. Um, the financial committee's role is to provide advice and to make recommendations on the articles that go before the town. And our role is to make sure that the town understands what they're voting on and the financial impacts of what they're voting on, and also to make recommendations. So if the finance committee makes no recommendation right now, and this gets approved, what we are doing is if this passes, when this passes, whatever, is agreeing that we will borrow whatever funds we have to borrow in order to build up to 12.3 million. And so we have to go into this prepared to um, borrow six and a half million dollars, $6.2 million, should that end up being the number. And with the, with the hope that um, the, you know, the legislation comes through and the 12 towns are successful in convincing. And, and I feel like there is some chance of that, but it is by no means guaranteed. I, I, I think it's sort of, a, I don't know what, I would say less than 50-50. Um, it, it might happen and that would be lovely and rejoiceful, um, but, but we have to be prepared if this is approved at town meeting to move because because it's an approval right and and move forward and I, so i think finance committee has the responsibility um not to abstain but to make a recommendation to the town with that recognition on it but does anybody else have a thought on specifically on this discussion on the abstention, abstention. On the abstention thing whether finance committee should abstain? No, no. okay i think you've stated uh, the point well yeah, I think it's a reasonable uh, explanation of what your obligation is to the town. So thank you for that. Um, I will just let let you know that there is legislation in the House. There is legislation in the Senate that both seek to address this. They're coming at it from different directions. And um, unfortunately for us, the, the time is what it is. And you have to make a decision based on what you know today. And that makes perfect sense. Is and, it written yet or is it in draft? Uh, I, these, these are drafts. And okay. so they, I just had a conversation with uh, Rep. Lay and, and Senator Comfort, and they both said, yes, there, there are various, um, there is draft le legislation being considered, but it's in probably intermediate stage at best, and they're going to try and update us next week or the following week as, as they get closer to the November closing date, um, but we won't have this information for town meeting, so, um, so it's perfectly logical what you're suggesting. If um, so, if legislation were to, uh, this is a process question. Maybe Candace knows the answer to this. So, say it it doesn't pass town meeting, or it doesn't pass that vote that we have to take whenever. Um, but then that funding were to come through, could we have like, can we do it again and have? Um, Again? Vote again. Could we have another town meeting and another vote? Um, we have. Is it gone? It's not really working. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, take them. Um, well, we're up against the January 9th deadline, so we'd have to do it pretty quickly. Um, okay. There's a thing, and no holidays. 
Um, is there any chance of, because there, I remember some like waffle words about an extension to that deadline possible, but definitely not guaranteed and there, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, there's, there's some interesting it seems conversations extenuating. happening. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, it's something that um, some of the people at the MLC really stand firmly by to say that it's unusual to get an extension. And even when you do get an extension, so they can keep up with their own um, budget <clears throat> that April is the April 30th is the last or whatever the end of April is, um, is the last date that you can um, move that up to. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, this being extenuating, extenuating circumstances and now we have 40 leg state legislators rooting for yeah. libraries, which exactly. I don't think has been done before. <laughs> so we don't know for sure. Um, and even if there isn't um, the conversations we're having, if there isn't flexibility uh, I think it wouldn't hurt to ask. I just don't know what we'll get. So. And just to clarify one thing, I, in the conversation that I just had with um, Rep. Blay and uh, Senator Cumberford, I, I suggested that one thing that would be very helpful to communities like Deerfield is that they work with the MBLC to remove that, uh, to give us the flexibility on the time. And I said, if you do nothing else, let do that and uh, so that if if financial arrangements are made that will benefit uh, you know the taxpayers so they don't have to come up with a lot of money um, but but so that's I'm hopeful that they they both agree that that's an important thing to consider yeah the MBLC got a lot of feedback when they had that meeting with the 40 legislators about a couple of weeks or a month ago and um, they said they got a lot of feedback about the, re the restrictive process <clears throat> that the MBLC has, and you know, it's worked for them since 1987, but you know, times change. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know, they're gonna be entering a new grant cycle, you know, in a couple of years. So maybe they'll make the change then. And I don't know if that will have any impact on us. I think we'll have an impact if all the communities voted down and then they have no, no money, you know, there's no, no way to give the money out. That will also have some impact. You guys talked so, about this at CIPC, right? The CIPC approved it? Uh, it did, yeah. yes. Okay, do you have any comments from that meeting that would be helpful to the discussion? Yeah, actually, um, some of what informed that, at least for me, was your updated numbers, or I guess our updated numbers. But um, as as far as I'm concerned, the, the way I look at this with the updated numbers is um, we generally don't do the best job of maintaining buildings that we have. And if we don't move forward with the library, we're gonna have to figure out what happens with the library next. And we did ask Candace if there was a, a plan uh, for the library, uh, if this does not go through and um, you know, we, we don't have, have one yet. Um, but uh, for me as like a, just an you know, individual person on the CIPC, when I took a look at the numbers, the, the way I see it is, even though I haven't been the biggest supporter of the library up until recently, um, I, I don't I don't see a way that we're going to be able to get a, a you know a, an upgraded or expanded library uh, for six million net again. Um, we may be able to kind of postpone this, but I think that. The, we, we, we can we can probably you know it'll it'll be a stretch for the town and I, and I know that recommending this is going to be a stretch for certain people in town but we're at this spot where I, I think we we can you know still recommend this and you know not do something financially stupid and get a good building out of it and I think if there ever was a year that we would be able to get some sort of state aid for escalating costs it would be this year um, I don't think that this shot that we have at the 4.3 million, we're ever going to get again. Uh, and then the other thing that kind of swayed my opinion a little bit is the fact that we do have escalating costs built in to this $12.3 million estimate. And we also have some contingency in the engineering design. So my concern initially was when this first came to capital with, uh, an $8 million request, uh, I did not think that that was uh, an accurate number and it turned out it wasn't. Um, I have a lot more confidence in the new number now. Um, I think that a $2 million donation, I think is a reasonable number. I, I don't think that that's um, 
a, uh, a swing for the fences goal. I like that there's the lead certification and, and all that bringing it down to 6.2 million. You know, if we think about what, what happens five years from now, you know, if, if we don't approve it now and we try and do this again, are we gonna be able to get a building built or renovated for 6.2 million? And I, I, don't, I don't think we will. So it's for, for that reason, I, I, I would recommend it. Yeah. I, I voted yes on the CIPC because um, I felt it was important to let the library have time to go through the process. Um, I am concerned more than maybe Mark is, although I agree that ultimately maybe we could try to figure out some way to swing it, whether we reduce the footprint or something. But the idea is that you know, uh, we need to give the library a chance to have the process here because I think there is good opportunity to get some additional funding because this is definitely COVID impacted expenses and that's no question. And we are in the same boat with all the communities. And I don't feel, I mean, West Coral has already voted down their library. And I know for sure that Orange is struggling themselves. So I don't see us as any different, but if we, hadn't voted to support this it can't it really we're not letting it go through the process the 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 debt exclusion is the final chance to you know what nail down the numbers do are, are all these numbers still not not uh, we have no information then then yes it's legitimate maybe to vote no but at this point we don't there is hope to get some numbers and i and i feel like we need to have a little bit of faith in you know everybody advocating for this because it is statewide and it is truly impacted by COVID. That's what the ARPA money is for, and there is a surplus of at least two billion, and the ARPA money is two point three. I mean, sixty nine million, which is the difference, the impact uh, on the libraries, is still a drop in the bucket on the four point three billion that is available. So. It's the Senate president, it is, it is the governor and the, and the House speaker that we have to influence. And I think there is a good chance. That's all. That's why I, I voted yes. Go ahead, John. Uh, I'd like, I, can, I have, I'm concerned about the operating, the increase in operating costs with the bigger library. Um, there's gonna be more maintenance. I don't know, I yeah. haven't seen, I would like to see, uh, estimated budget as if there was a new building. For 2023, the library was budgeted at 203,000. Uh, what's what's going to happen with the new building? So, Candace, do you want to <clears throat> come talk about that a little bit? No, go ahead. Can I say something? Oh, um, let's let Brenda say something first and then Candace. Um, when it comes to the building itself, the building maintenance is taken on by the town under the town building maintenance budget. So Candace is responsible for the operational part of it, you know, the, the workings of the interior part of it and so on and so forth, like the elevator. Um, but Kevin's budget would be the one to maintain the building. Right, Candace? Correct. It, it okay. will still be an increase, though, no matter which line item it's under. Let, yeah. Let's let Candace talk about it for a second. So um, I just had an email today with actually Phil O'Brien, who's here, so he can maybe um, speak to this as well. Okay. Um, in fact, it was a very recent email, so I don't know if I remember all the details. But um, basically being uh, lead certified and changing out oil for electric and whatever else we do uh, that we're thinking of to be uh, have um, you know, more energy efficiency that will bring um, you know, energy costs down. Uh, the design that will definitely focus on uh, what, what we call in library land is um, sight lines. So you could, and I know that Hadley Library um, at the FAQ, um, the, the virtual FAQ session we had a couple weeks ago, the director of the Hadley Library uh, spoke to this that, um, he feels like his staff is working at their capacity now, whereas before they were working under their capacity because people weren't coming in and now people are coming in. So now it's just like, like they, they, they've met each other, you know, at the same level and they've designed it so they can still see. It's like maybe before I was looking from here to that speaker. Now I'm looking from, from here to that exit door. 
still seeing, but more space. And so that comes into the design aspect for as far as like staff goes. Um, and I'm going to let Phil answer some, make some other points. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, so um, there's nothing about the design, uh, as Candace says, that, that would uh, necessitate the library having to go out and hire additional folks. Um, you're in a two-story building now, you're gonna end up in a two-story building. We've done this a, a number of times. Um, it was a question that we had in our public forum and uh, the director from Hadley, the director from South Hadley and the director from Sunderland were all there. They all had similar things to say. We've designed actually all three of those buildings. Um, and again, there's, there's nothing about the design that would that would require you to go out and hire additional staff. We're trying to make it easy to to operate um, with the staff that you have. Um, given that, uh, the second part of the question, or maybe the first part of the question, was about maintenance costs. We've we've broken it down a little bit um, in terms of the operating costs, uh, and this is done. This calculation is done based on a discussion I had today in response to Candace's question with our mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection engineers um, is, I, I should tell you that typically what part of their process that they'll go through with us when we get into the next design phase and we do engineer all the systems is they'll do a, a life cycle cost analysis for a variety of different systems and compare them. Um, and these are the types of numbers that they would use in helping you to determine what the life cycle costs are for the building. So for a building of your size, based on the, the numbers that I heard from our electrical engineer today, um, you're talking about electricity at about $2.10 per square foot per year. Um, we're looking at an all electric building with no fossil fuels. So the gas price or the oil price would be zero. We're looking at a maintenance cost of $1.30 per square foot per year. And then the mechanical system that we're looking at right now, um, is a very durable system and they typically will also look at what the 10-year expected equipment replacement costs are and for the type of system that we're looking at a variable refrigerant flow system there is no real 10-year equipment replacement costs so there's the, that's a zero as well so the total comes out to three dollars and fifty cents per square foot per year and when you multiply that out on your building you get about forty five thousand dollars per year that's for electricity and for maintenance and so if you're taking maintenance out as a separate line item and that's handled by the town, then obviously a portion of that 45 would be for that. Now, the other thing that he told me is because we don't really know where electricity costs are going to go, what you should do is put a multiplier on there of 30 percent. Um, that's what he called a safety factor. That basically takes you to about fifty eight thousand dollars and some change. So in round numbers, you could say it's about fixed sixty thousand dollars a year for power and maintenance total thanks phil you're welcome <clears throat> any other questions about that what do you use to heat the place oh, the place oil currently I currently mean, what, oil what, what is the cost yeah I mean, so what's the current that's what I'm sitting here to figure out the thing right in front of me i don't have that in front of me um so what do we pay right now for all of that? But isn't that, so that oh, for four, utility? Five, six. I would have to look. Brenda might know. It's oil. It's oil, yes. Yeah. I just quickly pulled up uh, FY22. Um, you paid basically $2,700 in electricity and you paid $2,400 in fuel oil. Um, there was grounds maintenance which i'm sure included the um the um snow removal the lawn mowing things like that i think that was if i remember right that was like ten thousand dollars so really your costs aren't that high at this point so, so phil when you gave us that those numbers you had power and maintenance do you have like can you split that out for us just the power you mean just the power yeah I'm, I'm working on that right now. <laughs> I, I anticipated that question. I'm doing math. The reason that I'm asking is we're kind of notoriously bad at maintenance. And so we may not have been, I imagine your maintenance number includes like annual maintenance of all of the equipment that's in there and the. We don't yes, it's there. right. It's not just changing filters. It would be doing all the recommended maintenance of all the equipment and so forth. Now, the other thing, um, this assumes an HVAC system that has air conditioning in the entire building. I don't know if you have that. 
Yes. What? You don't have it now. I have what? What kind of air yeah. Do you have any air? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. We just have like separate units. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, so let's see. The um, If I just do the electricity and I multiply it out and then I put the safety mul app multiplier on it, it's coming out to 35. So that's- So, so that's a, a that's, little less that's actually less. than what we're spending right now for- Yeah. Food. Which that is not gonna be Some accurate for this winter. Hundreds, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not clear on that um, either. Oh, 3,500 or 35,000 for- Oh, like no, I'm sorry. 35,000 of that 60,000 is for the electricity. Per year. Per year? That's what they're telling me, yes. This is an all electric building and it's this covers basically, because it has no fossil fuels, it's covering your power and lights, which actually is uh, not that much of the load, um, but it's carrying your heating and your air conditioning as well. Um, but the other thing that we're doing is uh, you're building any new building uh, and you'll end up looking at numbers like this for any new building you're doing. Um, the big difference here is that uh, the code requires mechanical ventilation for your building. Mm -hmm. And you, you, your existing building probably does not have that. It you're relies on opening windows and so forth. And so you heat up or air condition all that air, and then the code requires that you blow it outside and bring in fresh air, which needs to be air conditioned or heated. Um, now we're capturing as much of that as we can um, with heat exchangers um, to make sure that we don't blow all that heat and cooling outside, but that tempers the air that's coming in rather than, so there is some loss, obviously. Is there gonna be an HRV or an ERV in the building? Yes, that's that's in terms of capturing some of that air and that heat, that's exactly what it would be. So, so we're looking at just shy of a thousand or um, 3,000 a month in electricity. And that's with the safety factor? That includes a safety factor of 30%, not knowing where your electricity is gonna go. In other words, that's a, so that's got a built-in kind of um, significant escalation factor. One okay. thing that you said, Phil, was um, you know, with the controls in each room that when we're not using certain spaces or when we're not open, um, you know, we can have the heat and the AC um, you know, down pretty low. That's right. You, the set points of something like that would be pretty low, and then they would also be set so that the, the public couldn't mess with them if they were if they were cold. You won't have anybody messing with them; they'll all be kind of locked down. Um, but without that multiplier on it, it, comes out closer to twenty-seven. So it'll probably it'll 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 probably be somewhere between those two numbers per year. <clears throat> and is that an air source heat pump? system that is that assumes an air source heat pump so if you had a geothermal system probably a little cheaper than that if you had a shared geothermal heat system like the campus folks are talking about it would probably go even lower if you had a photovoltaic system on the roof um that would make a significant impact on on the on the amount of energy we did a we did a photovoltaic array at the Irving Public Library that pretty much does 100%, and they have an all-electric building as well. Um, the costs are lower because the building is a little smaller than what you're looking at, but basically the, the photovoltaic array there pretty much provides all of the electric power that they need. Yeah, so we could integrate that into our design. You certainly could, yes. Do you, do you know how much that cost? Uh, that that library that you were referring to, the PV system, the PV system at that building was on the order of a quarter of a million dollars. It's a large array that sits on the ground behind the parking lot. Oh, and do we do we have enough square footage for a roof based system? Not if it was all going on the roof. Well, that it would be close. Um, it would be close. Okay. <clears throat> I, I have to say, as part of the Capital Improvement Committee, I would definitely encourage solar mm -hmm. on the roof as part of the design. It, it would help with LEED certification as well. Yeah, sounds like it's a no-brainer. Yeah, Trevor? <laughs> the other thing that may help is that we're, we're 
hopefully close to getting the landfill solar done, which would be a massive array. So, you know, we'll save in some areas and spend in other areas in the town, but hopefully that will that will pan out. It's been a long haul. <laughs> we got to get an update on that a bit, but um, wait on Eversource as, as usual, but um, hopefully that will help offset some of that that cost. But it is, it's expensive not to use fossil fuels and fossil fuels yeah. are much cheaper to run and they are killing our planet. So it's like one of those genetic things. And then just uh, recently, as part of the campus project, I asked um, Northeast Solar to come over and um, give a preliminary plan for putting solar on the church roof. Mm. And they do, they designed a quick design of 22.2 kilowatt system for the church um, that would also be a contributor to the campus if, if it were done. And it was $75,000, including design and installation, um, and also upgrading the electrical panels in the building because they're they're pretty crap. Yeah. Do they say whether or not it could be used for other structures? Because like I would imagine those buildings have separate grounds. So I don't know how complicated that would get. One of the, not to bog this discussion down, yes, we talked about that and also how to, how to apply the 27% um, federal grant um, against buying solar systems. Um, so yeah, but I, I don't want to bog this discussion. It's just okay. a, yeah. another. You're right. That doesn't help our library discussion. Any. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're clearly getting ahead, a Dean. much larger uh, building, which is going to have a lot more usage. So I think we would assume that there would be some increased um, expenses related to the building. Although I'm assuming the maintenance is certainly going to be that figures still not as much as less for a cool. while, right? Oh, no, wait, no, since we have a new building. It does seem high. Does the, um, um, yes, what's the maintenance, maintenance cost on a, or inspection cost on an elevator versus a lift? Because you're already paying for inspections for a lift. Does anybody know that? Well, the lift inspection is, um, I think it's 400. Okay, so that's not a huge impact then. Yeah. Well, well, these numbers are, somewhat insignificant compared with what we're tasked with talking about right today yeah okay <laughs> well except it's that perspective. No, part of the i mean if you approve the project you're buying sure. into whatever the sure. annual costs are of right. the project in yeah. addition yeah. to the um yeah. funding for right. the but just buying the building. right and the benefits so. that go with it i guess yeah yeah, I would I hope guess if we if we do have surplus electricity being generated that we can potentially use it for the library. So that's why I'm I'm wondering. Yeah, I think we do right in like with the uh, the credits that we're getting and other stuff we kind of spread around to different buildings. And I think hopefully when we get that massive array done, um, fingers crossed, we could we could you know spread that around too to help offset costs of buildings. Candice, you have a comment? Um, yeah, I just. Um... The MBLC worked really hard to help libraries know about um, energy, like Eversource has grants, like there's a lot of um, initiatives out there for saving money uh, when you have things like solar or like you know, a new certified building. Um, we do get a lot, there's a lot of grants available. Okay, just to repeat that into the microphone, um, yep. Candace just said that there the MBLC works with libraries to notify them of any grant opportunities related to energy. Um, and those would be looked at in the future, I guess. Um, Jeff, do you have a comment? And so this is gonna sound blunt and don't take it this way. I'm not interested in general opinions, but if you have a comment that will elucidate something that we haven't talked about or, or put us down another um, uh, path, I'm very interested in hearing that. Okay. <laughs> uh, very quickly, is there any reason if this got voted no, at this point in time, that once all these other variables happened or did not happen, that we could not bring this back to a special town meeting and vote it? No. I'm not the expert, but I think that the problem is, if I understand it, is that the grant that, that we have from the library building committee or whatever it's called statewide, um, has a sh has a sharp deadline on it, and it's sometime in January. January 9th. January and 9th. So, January yeah. 9th. So that is the that is the problem. But from what I'm hearing here, it sounds like in legislation they're 
going after this very quickly and should be happening in you know here in something two three four weeks from now no you, i don't think well, so. you, no, I, you could or it could happen later and it could happen i hope it could happen anytime no. yeah and it just costs us to you know to run a special town meeting it just costs us money so yeah i mean it's possible that um if this doesn't pass either in this october 24th vote or in whatever date it is december 6th or some other date and the the legislature comes back and says you know we're changing the rules the mvlc deadline doesn't count anymore we could hold a special town meeting um but in order you know would it be wise to not vote now in anticipation that something might happen i'm not sure that's a good idea um better a no vote and and then go to the MBLC and say, we voted down based on this past rule, but now the rules have changed and we'd like an extension. Um, and I would definitely agree with a lot of uh, uh, Julie's analysis about the $4.3 million. We may not get it, we may get it, we may get some portion of it, but I would say that the more likely thing is if people support voting for the, for, they vote for the library project and then they vote again in the future to solidify this as a debt exclusion that those people probably who voted for the library would probably be in favor of the cpa using a million dollars which we already have in our hands to min to reduce the cost of the project so i would say the one million cpa request is probably much more likely to happen than any other possibility that we're talking about now from yeah and the one one other question yep if i understand this correctly with the addition being proposed in the library, there would be a community center in there that we'd be spending money on, or a meeting room, whatever meeting you want. Yep. But they they worded it a couple different ways: a meeting room or a community center that the town could use. Mm -hmm. We're also going to turn around and do a, a community center in the church. So does that mean we're going to have two community centers and are the taxpayers going to be paying for duplication? Thank you. Um, I, 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 yeah, I mean, the church thing is a whole separate issue, isn't it? In terms of yeah. what that's going to be used for uh, in the future. So do you want to well, speak just, to that briefly? Or? Just clear, clarity yeah. on the church thing. Uh, you know, the, the reason that we're looking at the 150, you know, go back to another article, the 150 for the church is that, you know, the, I think the, the intention of the people in town is that they don't want to see it taken down. So the idea is to save it. What we use it for, I'm not sure. I think there's an intention we'd like to use it for a senior center. There may be something else that comes out of the woodwork and we don't end up using it for a senior center. But I do still think... It would be a great space for town meetings, um, a meeting space and community center, any other kind of thing. As long as we're not taking it down, I think it's important to fix it. But what it gets used for, I don't know. And I think the library will have some space for functions and things we can do. But it, I, don't, I don't think it would be a community center space other than the, what the library puts on for programming. Kim, she had your hand up. But you're nodding, though, no. like it's maybe done. OK. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. So, um, uh, yep. With with that explanation, then does that mean that the church is going to become the permanent senior center? No. no. I mean, it's possible that uh, you know we've asked Jim McGovern for a three million dollar grant. If it made sense to earmark. spend, yeah, earmark, yeah, uh, but. Essentially, we, we asked for him for $3 million. And if it was the decision of the community that we should spend that $3 million renovating the heck out of the church and turning it into the senior center, then that would be a logical thing to do. But as Trevor says, there's lots of different discussion about what that building could become or should become. And that's a future thing as opposed to what you're faced with now, which is what are you going to say on Monday or what are you going to say tonight? Since this, since this church senior center issue isn't directly part of the library, I feel like I can speak up. Wasn't that the purpose that the building was purchased for by the town in the first place? No, I mean that was there was some discussion early on about. I think that was a, that was an option, definitely, and a, and a pretty high option that we were going to use that because it had a kitchen. You know, we could make some space for it. Um, and, and really, the real reason we we took it over was was the land and and the continue. It's 
space from you know it just kind of it let us take that area over and it gave us options in the future but it wasn't um the parking lot is part of the church the parking lot is the church parking lot not and so the the land is finite and so it was a good investment to take over just to make sure that we had a campus kind of contiguous ownership of land the the consensus of multiple committees is that the church is worth saving and do we have a final use no because we have a lot of different plans up in the air and a lot of you know which money will sort itself out in the next probably two or three months We'll have a bit more concrete idea of where the money's coming from and different grants that are pending. All right, can I make some general comments? Go Just for it. following on sort of the motion and then sort of jumping on what um, Mark and, and Carolyn have said. Um, I just, uh, one, I think the town's finances are actually in pretty good shape uh, for a project like this. I think that the timing is really important. And I think uh, Carolyn has made a pretty compelling argument for that uh, the other night um, about this idea that we need to go forward, um, obviously based on the 6 million, but the idea, the opportunity that we would give this up when we potentially have the opportunity to get that um, ARPA money and have a tremendous town resource for pennies uh, you know, on, on the homeowner, if you look at the, the best case scenario of what, $55 a year for the average family home to, to finance this kind of uh, a project seems like something we should not um, give up uh, easily. Um, you know, state money coming from the Eastern part out here to leverage a project in the 413, I think is something that uh, you always have to look extremely hard at and not um, yes. not uh, throw it away. Um, so um, for all those reasons, I think I would, I mean, obviously I'm suggesting where I'm voting for this and a, and a strong uh, supporter of it. And also the, the library itself, I mean, I don't know how many people have actually gone on and looked at the plans. I, don't, I doubt that many perhaps, but maybe everybody has. But the community center, as you, as you called it, that's in there, um, and the idea that it's not just a library. I know the building committee from the state, the grant people, you know, we're saying it's obviously the library, but it's gonna open up tremendous programming opportunities for the whole town, um, you know, from, you know, toddlers to seniors, to visiting talks, to musical things. I did count the chairs on the plan. I can't remember what it was, but it was at- About 80. 80, about 80 chairs in that, in that room. Um, and then the idea was we have all these projects and nothing's going to get cheaper. And maybe Mark mm -hmm. was alluding to that. And we have all these projects to do. And it seems like with the kind of leverage we have here, the possible uh, political forces that are at play to get even more leverage, um, that it would be financially irresponsible of us not to go forward with this and to, um, to vote for it. So that's my piece on that. And then I'm curious, James, why you can't speak up on the library? I'm also a library trustee. Do you have a financial interest in the library? No, nobody does. I mean, I guess Pam does not, but. Right, but you're not related to anybody. I just feel like, does. you know, it, it's not, I know, but yeah, I'm not married to it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. married to a trustee. I you're, am a trustee. <laughs> right, yeah, no, I understand that, but I'm just, just but you know, it's a small town and we all play different roles, but I'm just, yeah, but I, just I don't think there's a real ethical like, conflict. You know, it's, yeah. I, I, out of abundance Substance of caution. Anyway. <laughs> um, one more comment about the CPA funding. So I, yeah. I would be like, if this passes, I would be hard over heartily in support of using that CPA funds to support the library. But then we need to recognize that CPA yeah. funds, like everything else, are limited. So if we use it for the library, then it's not available for the AKA community building coming. or the whatever the next thing is, yep. the, you know, the final church. I agree with you, but um, I'd also say that, you know, the only reason we even started moving on the 1880 building and CPA funding is because we know that we can bond against the local surcharge. And yeah. I always thought that that was the key to making the 1888 building work is bond against it. It is, but even with that, so you're, you can bond up to the amount that the that the, right. the town can do, which is about two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we went we went through and figured this out. Right, um, it's actually about two hundred. 
And so yeah. if we, it's about 5 million, including what we have in there and what we can borrow for a 20 year loan if we did a 20 year yeah, loan. I so that's I about 5 10, million. I, and they're starting like the first sally of the price was like 8 million. And so our price response was, is there anything that we can do? Huh? What was the 8 million from? I, I never heard that figure. Um, the architect came and um, th this is. Is this, this new, is, new this, information? So this is the level of estimate, right? Yeah. They did a very similar project on a similar aged building where they refurbished the building and um, and it came out to, I think, $750 a square foot or something. Mm -hmm. So if you take that times the square footage here, right. um, it ends up being about $8 million. So mm -hmm. that, like, that's the level of estimate. There's no yeah. like. They haven't looked at the condition of this building or done the programming right. or anything. It, this yeah. was the very first meeting from the architect, mm -hmm. but you know, their first comment was it's really like an $8 million project. So our response back is we have 5 million <laughs> or 4 million. <laughs> so what can we do? So, you know, right. there there's, it's not even worth discussing yet because we don't have a value for it, but, right. um, we're going to be up against whatever is available. Right. So, it, so at eight million, I would argue, yes, uh, we'd be up against a much higher climb than we are on the yeah. on the on the library, because uh, we apply one million to the library and it goes forward. Right. We don't have eight million dollars for the eighteen eighty yeah. building, so we're not going to do that. Right. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we're going to gain one thing and we might lose another thing, um, yeah. but. As, as everyone knows, I, when we talked to the architects, I said, we have $4 million to spend. Right. What can we do for $4 million? Are you telling me as an architect, you can't design something in which we only spend $4 million and we have a usable building? Because there have been cases made that we could use this building now. It's not in great shape, but we've decided not to maintain it or do anything to it. So, yeah. you know, yeah, it's a challenge. It's a real challenge. So what we do with that building is kind of beyond the scope of this discussion, but just yeah. a recognition. Yeah. Were, were you talking about borrowing against the CPA flow that comes in? Mm -hmm. So okay. It's, so the million that we're talking about for the library, is that a million coming out of an account that it's already in there? Yep. Yes. Okay. There. So that's not talking about correct borrowing against it. Yeah. And, no. And how much goes in every year? I mean, obviously it varies by sales of our local real estate, right? It, no, well, it's 3%. Yeah on a surcharge on your tax bill and and so uh, and and uh, the state everybody's tax bill. Yeah. Sorry. and, okay. and the yeah. state supposedly is matching it to 100 percent. and trend oh the trend has been that they traditionally match the funding but you can't it's not guaranteed so you cannot borrow against the state's share or the state's match so like uh, Brenda is gone, I think. Yes, but, she is. Um, currently, my, my latest figure from Brenda was that we had $1.45 million in the undesignated fund of CPA. Um, that doesn't include money for this year. And um, when I was doing my calculations, I think they're similar to what Julie was referencing. It's between 200. The actual amount of money you can bond against is not the full amount of the local match because you have to you're required by statute to take out 10% for various categories. Mm -hmm. So really we can only borrow against about $200,000 in the under current situation. Um, but uh, that that gives you your borrowing limit. And if you decide it's a 10 year project or a 20 year project, then you have to factor in what are the interest rates, but you are gonna get matching funds every year and it is possible to spend those matching funds. And pay it down sooner. Right. Well, and um, so the final thing I'll say is that over the life of the time that Deerfield has been involved in CPA, the state match has averaged 80%, I mean, over that time. So even if we only got 200,000 saying that uh, from the state, mm -hmm. it's still a, a significant amount of money that could be applied to that project. I would just again thank you, Julie, for all your incredible work on presenting uh, numbers for folks in terms of looking at the impact of this across the board. I think that's super helpful for people's analysis. Yeah. Yeah. 
any further discussion on this? Is, I guess I'm lucky enough, I don't have to be concerned about the increase in my taxes because of the smart farm move. But I just wonder about other people in the town. Does it, is it really gonna, is the $200 say increase in taxes, does that really affect a lot of people in town? Or maybe probably not a lot, but there's probably some it does. And I, you know, I wonder about them. That's, uh, that's just my thoughts. That's all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I, something I, to consider. Yeah, as someone who recommended this, you know, I, I, I certainly thought of that too. And I would want, I would wonder if some of the folks who would have a hard time with this would also benefit from the library at the same time. I, I'm, not, I'm sure it's not everyone, but I wonder if those two groups intersect. Again, I think most of us are supportive of, you know, moving forward with the possibility of additional state funding. I, I, I don't. If we had that. I know. Grant, it I know. would be a no-brainer. I mean, like, when my we did the sewer, it was like that. Seconds. But it's just, I know. I think it was like this. Exactly. And I sewer. think, you know, if we framed it that we, assuming all of the other things that are supposed to happen, the $2 million in raising, fundraising, et cetera, if what we're really talking about is will we borrow $6.25 million or will we borrow $5.25 million? Is that something that's reasonable to ask the, the town's folks to pay for? Because that's the numbers where we're in between a high number, make, make it 6.5 and a low number of 5.5 if the CPA funds are used. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the question. Um, we're authorizing 12.3 million and that's why I was trying to, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I think it. we're all over that. We don't yeah. need to talk about that anymore. Um, Bruce, do you have a comment? Yeah, Bruce. Okay, following up on Mark, I believe it's yeah. Uh, just uh, just to kind of reiterate what's I happening. Mean. I mean, the dollar amount to two hundred and forty-four dollars or whatever is very minimal. I agree with that. Okay, for a year, and it's a great project if all these numbers come through. It would be foolish not to do it. But if they don't, right now, using Julie's numbers at three hundred and forty thousand four hundred sixty dollars for an average value. The tax bill right now for that house is $5,165. If they're on South Deerfield Water, it's another $354. If they're on South Deerfield Fire, which the whole town is, it's another $344. Now, uh, the CPA on top of that is $109. So right now, the that tax bill for that average house at the current tax rate is $5,972, $6,000. Your own statistics say that uh, the average tax bill has been going up about three to 4% per year. So now you add that onto the uh, 3%, there's $180 there. Uh, everybody's, uh, Leverett is a good example. Their uh, aggregator electric rate just went from 10 point something to 23 cents. So, you know, that 30% that he was talking about doesn't even come close, that's over 100%. Uh, inflation. So pe people's electric bills are going to go up $100, $150 a month. If you have oil, oil is around $1,200 for a tank right now. Um, I do volunteer uh, in the senior center and on the Wednesdays that they once a month that they bring in food. Uh, back a year ago, there probably wasn't more than 10 or 12 people in that line. Now there's 60 and 70, okay, in that line that show up on, on Wednesdays. So yes, there is an impact for quite a few people, and especially a lot of us that are on social security. And as I said, as a town finances, yes, they look great, but um, a lot of these people can't afford that. I'm sorry. And so I'm just speaking the facts that are right here. So I don't wanna get into personal opinions. These are the facts. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else have anything to say? <laughs> I just don't know what to think about. All right. So it has been moved and seconded for Article 18. Um, any further discussion or comments? All right. All those in favor? 
Right. All those opposed. Centers. All right, that carries three one one. Um, I want to spend just another minute on that. So when this is presented, when finance committee comments on this at town meeting, um, I just want to get make sure I'm capturing everything append opinions. So I've got the notes I wrote down, which is from when we talked about this before, that the library should be commended on the process, you know, got the grant, recruited donations, everything, that the state subsidy is by no means assured, and we should vote this with the realization that it may not come through and that we should be prepared to pay, you know, that full amount. Um, I want to put something, your comment about the opportunity. I'll come up with some words along those lines. Are there any other points that I should capture? Oh, the um, cost, the increase costs, um, um, annual cost due um, to all electric. Really, I'm not sure if it's relevant to what you're talking about now, but there's a question from the project manager. Hey, Dan. Hi, Brian. When you're talking about the state subsidy, yeah, yeah, yeah. not the, the grant. Additional. This is the additional. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want the, Maybe call it ARPA funds. Or right. Like oh, that's an excellent grant. point. Okay. Yeah. MBLC grant assured. Thank you. Additional. How it's additional, additional funding. Subsidy. It, it, it's additional funding. Right. Subsidy is mm -hmm. the wrong word. Yeah, funding. It's oh. additional funding requested. Additional requested funding. There we go. Is it ARPA funding? Yes, it could well, be, but it could be something else. It could be. It could be. It, it's. It, there's two pots of money. It's the surplus revenue mm -hmm. left over from the 62F, which is the money that was returned to the taxpayers, yep. mandated by that that 1980 something law, which is a roughly two billion, and then you have 2.3 billion in ARPA money. It is a joint pot. How they distribute it. You know, there's different mm -hmm. ways. So it may not be apt to call that ARPA money then? No, yeah. I would just say additional requested state funding. The town has requested and the state is considering whether to award another $4.3 million. Uh, but it's no- Where are the no other towns? Money. Are they all, is it all Western Mass towns? No, there oh no, it's too? Westboro, Gloucester. Amherst, um, West Ford. West Ford. Granby, I don't know, maybe not Granby, um, Seekonk. So they're all across. The it's state. like all over the state. All over the state. state. That also all <laughs> oh, that's good. Because if yeah. it was all Western yeah. Mass towns, we wouldn't yeah. get it. No, <laughs> no, orange, <laughs> orange. No, 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 absolutely. That's why I say it's it's 11 of the 40 senators are impacted. It's their constituencies. More than 25%. 25%. That helps the case. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and there is two different bills that are being drafted. So there will be negotiation. Okay. We'll have a new government, whoever it is. Any other points I should write down to capture? Books are good. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay. If I can read my writing and figure it out. The operating costs, I mean, you talked about electricity, but there's, yeah. you're going to have to pay more for custodian. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's it's true. Not big money, but... There's other, you know, there's the custodian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know what other, I can't think of other things, but there has to be a bunch of other stuff that's going to increase. Yeah. We're not really voting on the budget for the library. No, but it goes. No, but you have to recognize the implications board, of sure. what you're, the decisions that you're making. Sure, but you could do that with all kinds of things that we're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think one of the things that is really highly important that this, if we do get additional funding and this does move forward, then um, we need to figure out where we're going to um, come up with the money for maintenance um, for we this do. building. Uh, you know, a pot of money that we set aside, just like we did for the EMS. 
And, you know, I know it's our intention and it certainly has come up on the CIPC multiple times that we need to figure out some kind of mechanism for um, maintenance. Yeah. And if we're building a building, then we, there should be a pot of money set aside. Whether we do it one-time monies like from a building permit that's unusually sized, which usually goes into free cash um, and, you know, or like our marijuana money that has not ever come forward it's coming, yet. Gone up, coming, <laughs> it's coming. Whatever. Okay, but so I mean, there has to be some right. granted position on that. Let's do sewer. We're done with library, right? We don't have to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Huh. It's changed to recommended. All right, Thank sewer. Um, we have, there's three articles on sewer. We've already voted the middle one. So we need to do the first one and the third one. So we're looking at article 14, 15, 15 first. We have a motion on article 15. If I can even find it. 14, we're doing 15, 15. 13, is it 14? 15. 15, 15 is what we want. We have article 15, which is on, doesn't have a page number. Well, they stop the page numbers after the page. Save an ink. Save an ink. Everybody found it? <laughs> on article 15? Okay, do we have a motion? Huh? I'd like to, <laughs> to go through it. Okay. Well, let's somebody move. summarize. I move that the committee <laughs> recommend the article. All right. We have a second. I'll second that. All right. Um, you need a summary of Article 15? Okay. So, Article 15 is the Acts of 1935, this is the, the, the main point of this is this is the act that says that whenever you do a major upgrade to the sewer system, that the town is required to pay not less than 25%, nor greater than 66% of that. That this changes that, and where we are right now, just voted right before as this meeting started by the select board is that now instead of saying the town will pay not less than 25%, it says the town taxes will pay not more than 25%. And, and that's because of the vote that was taken. We're going to put language into this right. warrant so right here. So where it's crossed out, where it's crossed out, provided yeah. that it shall pay not less than one fourth, nor more than two thirds, yeah. they're going to be replaced with not more than 25%. Okay. So it'll say, it'll say, provided that it shall pay, do I have this right? Mm -hmm. Not more yeah. than 25%, yeah. period. So that gets rewritten for Monday night. Yes. Right. That, yeah. 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 So that will yeah. show right. Monday okay. night. So that's what we're voting. So what that means is we can do a sewer project and we can set it up so that town taxes pay nothing and that all of the cost is borne by the sewer users. Um, or the town, or 25%. Or the town or can to decide 25%. to pay up to 25%. Mm -hmm. And when that project was accomplished, it would be presented to the town for vote because most likely right. it will require funding. <laughs> and um, at that point, the that split would be part of the vote. Yep. Is my understanding. Go for it, Don. Why isn't that 25, zero to 25% language in this article? Right? We, we just voted. voted. We, we just, just voted, voted it two so minutes ago. A little while ago. Meeting. Right at the beginning of the meeting. At the beginning of the meeting. So right. it, no, 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 no. It's a separate article of zero to 25. Right. No, 15. No. This is Article 15. Right. The Acts, right. Acts of 1935. That's They're going to write in. It, it's going to change for what we have written in front of us. That embedded text is the text of the old Act. Right. I understand that. But we just voted a separate article that says the town can charge zero to 25. No, you that's what not. we're talking that's, about right now. That's the article. Yeah. I'm lost. Yeah. 
we had to vote on it because the other night we closed our meeting without voting on it. And so we voted on it today. It was a two to one vote. Trevor opposed it and Carol and I supported it so that the language would say not more than 25% period. Yeah. Yeah. Where the strikeout is, where it, where it struck out, provided that it should pay not less than one fourth. That whole right. thing is stricken out, but now we replaced it, provided it. Uh, so we're not looking at the article we're going to see. Correct, we're correct. Gonna that's that's still going to be written okay. by, by Lisa. Yep. But that is the sentence that we're going to see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I guess the motion is, if I can warn your motion for you, that it is as written before us, amended to say, provided that it shall pay not more than 25%. Correct. In that class action. Yeah. And I'm sorry if I'm beating a dead horse because I know you guys have put huge amounts of work into this, but so somewhere in there, it's very clear that we're talking about like, a building of like the major systems. We're not talking about the overall operating cost. Correct. It's a whole separate operating cost is always sewer always, user fee. Always. Yep. Always up or down, depending on the need is. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then now, and then anything that we have done previous to this night is all at that 25, anyway. 75 split. Right. Okay. It's town is, is, is obligated to that. But any new projects coming okay. up, the town has yeah. the ability to do anywhere from Perfect. zero to 25. Yep. Yeah, it's totally Perfect. new. Anything new. Yeah. Okay, great. But what would, I mean, does that going forward, we haven't finished appropriating all the money for the improvements? Like the, this is, this is still at the old 25? This Yeah, anything that we have voted that $22 million, the 19 plus the three last spring, that's set at the town's obligation is still going to be paying that 25%. So if we took on a new project, like we did something in Old Deerfield or we did yeah, some, right. something we somewhere it. else, then we could bring, the sewer commissioners would decide what percentage we feel the town should okay. pay, if any, and present that to town meeting for the town to vote on. Thank you. Yep. We could go up to 67% before, now we'll only be able to go up to 25%. Bruce, do you have a comment? May I ask a question? Yes, please. Okay, so just for ha ha's, uh, we had the flood of 1938, and which is a ridiculous thing at this point in time, however, with the climate changes and everything else, it's becoming less and less ridiculous. So um, if for some reason a disaster did hit and the South Deerfield plant washed out, now with that saying, since this only goes from here back, now that's going to be put up to the town so that uh, the users could be bagged with 99% of that plant as well. What I understand is a bunch of uh, several million dollars going to go into construction of this reconstruction of sewer lines and so forth in town that's not in this 22 million dollars. So that would be subject to the same thing. I guess my concern is that in 1935, when this passed by legislature, the town itself, by one third of the voters, voted against even ratifying that that was mandated by the legislature. In 2007, when they voted Chapter 150, which turned out to be a void and illegal bylaw, the town again voted against the sewer user at 100%. They uh, voted that the um, user pay 100%. So if the selectmen bring forward a uh, thing for, well, the selectmen decided, or the sewer commissioners decided that the town's going to benefit. 25%. They brought to the town vote. Could that vote be amended on the floor to say, uh, I move that that percentage be brought down to 1%. So the town goes back down to 1%, which is already been set by precedent. That's what, exactly what the town would do. That would be my question. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. Yes. I mean, legally, sure. Yeah. So in other words, the town, the select board recommendation really has no guarantee that the user is going to be protected no more than 1%. Uh, 0%. Zero percent. Zero percent. There's not even 1%. Well, the, yeah. what the acts say a portion. A portion is not zero. 
be a penny. Hmm? Could be a penny. Okay, it could be a penny. So effectively zero. <laughs> so I, no, zero is a portion, a proportion that says to determine what proportion, no proportion. I am just going by the inter determination by Lisa. Okay, that, let's yeah. skip that. We're right, getting, that, we're that, getting that's on it. Right. Okay, we'll say zero. Yeah. Okay. Let's, so, let's so the town, even even with the sort commission recommendation to do 25%, that could be amended on the floor down to yes. zero percent. Yes, it could be. Um, okay. The, um, so last time we talked about this, um, Mark was concerned about that th this provides you said guardrails, I think, was the word yep. that you used. And, and the way it used to be written provides guardrails on both sides. It protects mm -hmm. the sewer users from it being too low, and it protects the rest of the town from it being too high, too high mm -hmm. right? right. Um, and right now, I um, asked or <laughs> I made people jump through a bunch of hoops, but we came up with numbers for how many people are on septic, how many houses are on septic versus how many houses are on sewer. And it's roughly 1,200 on septic, between 900 and 1,000 on sewer. So, so it's pretty even, but septic is a little higher. Um, so, it, you know, the, the vote, I, I guess that's, take that for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> I, but so. I, I would just like to make a comment that if we had a flood again, it would either be picked up by um, a declaration, federal declaration, which we would get reimbursed for, or it would be covered by insurance. So it's not. Hopefully. Yeah. The existing we, I mean, damage, damage done to plants. Yeah. There's yeah. piping and stuff like that, but we're talking about basically new projects. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm simply going to ask, given that the cost will be borne either by the taxpayers or the taxpayers and the sewer customers, how does this have any financial impact on the town one way or the other? It seems like it's either, you know, it's coming out of the same pockets. It's just the question is how much comes out of which pocket. But the town's finances are going to be the same, basically. Mm -hmm. So do we have a recommendation to make at all? Well, 25 could come, comes out of the general fund, right? Yeah. 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 That's the town, town money. Well, now, but- Yeah, but and, I mean, it's, it's, if, if, if the town is paying a lesser amount, then the sewer district is paying a larger amount, and you know, ultimately it's the same people. It is. But no. well, fewer of them. No. Fewer of them. Individuals versus the town. Right. All the towns. Actually. Fewer of them. And there's companies on it and mm -hmm. um, nonprofits on it. <laughs> companies pay property tax. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I do feel like there's a, a financial impact that should be yeah. respected. Yeah. Yeah. We have a motion in a second. We do. Does anybody want to say anything else about this before we vote it? No. Okay. We have a motion and a second for Article 15. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? All those abstaining? That's 401. That passes. Article 16, we have already voted. Article 17. Um, Article 17 removes chapter 236. I mean, yeah, chapter 236 of the bylaws um, after the proposed amendment to chapter 150 passes, should that pass? Mm -hmm. um, and that would be replaced by regulations. Regulations. regulations by the sewer committee. I think that's really an important point yeah. to put out rather than the Board of Health. Oh, right, yep. okay. Yep. Yeah, good. Um, do we have a motion? Make motion to move article 17. Second. Second it. All right. Discussion. 
I just want to say this puts us in a weird limbo situation. So I know that you are probably, you know, you know, a asking for this in good faith to go and write some regulations. But I guess I would just ask, please write the regulations. <laughs> I know it goes without We're saying. We're close. We're, um, I mean, we already have a lot of it. Yeah. And then also, um, you know, at some point, it might be worth visiting who the sewer commissioners are. Um, it, there's a lot of duties that are being put on the select board, I think. You think? So, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'll say. Any further discussion? Yeah, and is there any financial impact on this? Good point. Can you think of any? Um, um, th there, there is, because the sewer commission goes and actually sets the enterprise uh, fees, right? Mm -hmm. So. Well, is it, is it, we, the regulations would do the hookup fees, the betterment fees discussion, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So ultimately, yeah. it does have a huge impact. But the idea is that we would have flexibility um, we would discuss it and we could change the rate based on the conditions versus, you know, being stuck with outdated regulation, outdated rules. Yeah, or having to wait until another town meeting. Yeah. 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 Would those have to be approved by anybody other than the sewer commissioner? No. Just a hearing. We're and it doesn't have, require public hearing. hearings. So Currently, 236 is essentially regulations. Um, and because they're, they're codified, anytime you want to make a change, you got to come to town meeting and have a vote. Um, the regulations, a lot of them are dictated now by state statute, and they're driven by state statute. So if you write the regulations in such a way that says that when the state changes the statute governing this thing, we will adopt it immediately. So we don't have to do any that kind of stuff, but we uh, definitely are working with the lawyers and um, a wastewater treatment plant engineering firm to tell us what makes sense, what doesn't make sense. And um, I think one of the things that's gonna be in it, the defining regulation legislation is saying, anytime the regulations are changed, there will be a notification published three weeks in a row saying they're gonna hold public hearings so people can come and have input because Obviously, people who are on the sewer system would want to know, um, you know, what are you, what are you guys talking about, and what do you, you know, because this needs to be very public and open, and yeah. uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, when we were discussing this, um, the legal advisors were saying even you don't even though you don't have to do this, right. this is a best practice and you should write it into the document. So I believe that that's in the draft that's in process now. If so that, that's just in the regulations and, I, and it's not required by law anywhere. I so think the, regulations the bylaws could be changed. Yeah, I think the so bylaw that, requires, I, I, I'd have to read through this. The one that we're getting rid of. The 150. Oh, the 150. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, so don't hold me to it, but I will definitely so do my, we'll go home my research and, time, and, so and look at it. And then, you know, going back <clears> to the financial stuff, I would uh, foresee an potential situation where um, all of the members of the select board are on septic. Um, that I, it could be distinctly possible that that happens. So it would be. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> you mean like right now? You mean right yes. Now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I think for, for that reason, I know it's not what we're discussing right now, but for that reason, I think we should at some point consider having a separate sewer commission. You looking to serve? Well, I also, am, you know, you also want to yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, but here's the question of how to the makeup of the two of them. Right. How you choose and what. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a lot That's the beyond different. the scope of this yes, evening's right. discussion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What's the in financial impact of the makeup of the yes. sewer commission? Can you move to not talk the first meeting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks, Trevor. Yeah. Yep. Any other, anything else we need to talk about on Article 17? Any other discussion? All right, Article 17 has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? Opposed right. because I feel like it is going to provoke people to think that the sewer board is trying to put something over on me. I know that the sewer board will act in good faith, but there's, you know, well, once the regulations, where... once we have a, a, a standard regulations all, you know, promulgated, I, I, I feel like 
people would feel comfortable. It's just, it's just the, having the ability to do some changes when we need to and, and, and to react you know, to current situations. I mean, yes. it's just archaic the way everything is set up right now because nothing has really been done since the establishment of the sewer system. Casey? I just wanted to let everybody know that the select board acting as the sewer commissioners have, has had this conversation with council and council's recommendation, which is what we plan to follow, is to promulgate reg regulations so that they can be approved once we find out what the AG does with the sewer bylaw amendment that's in front of everyone at town meeting. So it would be, you're saying it would be in place, ready for approval. So it would be in place, yes, ready for them to approve as soon as we find out. That was the, that was her suggestion. And it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes me feel better about it. Yeah. I'm also really in favor of remove, reducing administrative burden. So if it makes it easier to administer our, I mean, these guys are overloaded. Regulations would because we wouldn't have to spend as much time, you know, going back to town meeting when something happens. And it would really clarify for the building department, which has to approve a lot of these kinds of projects. Um, you know, the connection you're using doesn't meet code. You have to replace it with, and it would quantify the fee structure. Um, yeah. Okay. The fee structure is what's really important. On. So we've got articles 12 and 13 left to look at. That's the land swap. Um, so do we have a motion for article 12? It's on page seven. Um, if you remember, we talked about this before, but the, the square footage that was in the wording of the article was um, not correct about how much was actually going to be swapped. So that has been updated, but we have, this is just the motions. We don't have the actual wording of the article in front of us. Um, that is the actual wording, Julie. Oh, is it? Yes. The only thing I said was I move. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, so the 5692 square feet, that's the new number. Yes, and I included the survey so that people could see both sizes of each parcel for 13 and 12. Okay. I make a motion to recommend is written. We have a second. Okay. Do we have any discussion? This all seems like a no-brainer. All yeah. those in favor? That's unanimous. Article 13. Make a motion to recommend. This is written. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Where is the parcel? Can you just tell me where the. Are we going to pass? Oh, hold up no. and make okay. sure that yes. you have. Okay, yeah. Um, I got this. I mean, we've been trying this for a long time. Right. And so 13, this is right? this one right here. Yeah. We're on yep. 13. Oh, I guess I should get glasses on. I didn't even see this blue line. Yeah. Okay. The large one's easy to read. So yeah. the square footage here is 3,958. We don't care what the price is going to be or anything like that because it's not. Um, I, I believe that is supposed to work in our favor. Did, did you end up getting a price for that? We, we had um, Harold Eaton do an appraisal and um, this is available. It's public information. I've mentioned it in public meetings. But the uh, the skinnier, smaller piece of land is valued fifteen thousand dollars higher than the small piece of land, the, the larger piece of land in the back, which is landlocked. Mm -hmm. So I think the the back piece, the five hundred five thousand square foot plus piece, was ten thousand, and um, the skinny piece was the twenty five thousand. So it will in a swap or something, um, you know, we would be getting the more valuable land and the landowner uh, would be able to probably have a tax advantage when they file their taxes because they're getting less than than what they're, they're getting. Yeah, they're giving away more than what they're getting. I guess that's, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I'm confusing myself. 
No, the appraisal, the appraisal is definitely in our favor. But once as the a project's town. done, the value of it's going to change too because there'll yeah. be access there that they didn't have before. Yeah, right. So, so we're just exchanging parcels. Exactly. Yeah, there's already an agreement to do an exchange. Right. I, I guess I was just wondering about to pay for said request. So yeah, the way this is, we have to we trust have these to, select board people because do. the way this is I'm written, in. I mean, it moved that the town purchase, yeah. they could just go off and there's no dollar yeah. limit or anything. Right. Okay. Um, we'd probably have a fit, but. <laughs> take or I, otherwise apply. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Sounds good. Just so that I'm absolutely sure of this, we, we are trading parcel A for parcel Yes. Okay. Got it. Yes. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Any further discussion? Everybody ready? Ready. Ready? Okay. It's been moved and seconded for Article 13. All those in favor? All right. That's unanimous. Um, that, I think takes us through every article and we have now voted all of the articles um would, are there any articles that we haven't voted that anybody would like to revisit for any reason so i'll have to admit that i didn't look at putting all of this funding together and once i looked at this sort of assessment of how much money we were spending the, the three the thirty thousand for the three hundred fifty it started to make me very uncomfortable. I was kind of uncomfortable when we voted it anyway. Um, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? The thirty thousand for the three hundred fiftieth anniversary. Um, oh, okay, sorry. Yep. You're, I'm sorry. Did we talk about that? Last about that. last meeting okay. you weren't here. I wasn't. So, I missed yeah. Um, Do you want me to go over it again, Julie? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I think we all understand what it's for. But, um, well, hopefully we're so not going to have to use it. So that, yeah, that's the hope. So okay. this is next year or something. I mean, I is next year. Jim is actually on the fundraising Friends yeah. of Deerfield. Yeah. No, we've got 20, last I heard it was something like 20. Two to twenty-three thousand. Twenty-three thousand. Yeah, I, I I had heard twenty-three thousand. And that's not counting whatever we raise with the jubilee dinner. Well, this is what what triggered the jubilee is that, um, I mean, what triggered this was the jubilee was intentionally to be a fundraiser, but um, unfortunately, uh, the way things worked out, it's probably going to be more of a break-even event um, because they're going to have to pay for, you know dishes rental of dishes rental of tablecloths rent rental you know even shoveling the snow so um it was not as an as much of a uh going to be a much of a fundraiser and so most of the commitments that we have for events you know having to pay we would be paying for them uh deposits stuff like that would be happening in the first quarter of the year and any money that we raised or requested in um annual town meeting would not be available to july 1st which is way past our parade fireworks you know all you know uh the transition between the parade and the fireworks evening and all that kind of stuff so we're just a little nervous that's all um and you can't commit to like the the bands for the parade and all that kind of stuff unless you have cash in the bank so the idea is to have cash in the bank although the friends of deerfield have been really successful and intend to be really successful so i don't feel like there's any reason to doubt that and so the idea is the, if we have to use the money that friends of deerfield would you know this money is going to come back in towards it anything and they'll be fundraising right through the end of 2023 like christmas ornaments and all your beer glasses and what all t-shirts all that kind of stuff so in the end i think the projection based on hatfield's experience based on sunderland's experience based on conway and waitley's experiences the money will be there but i'm just trying to be 
you know, on top of stuff because I don't want to have to come to the finance committee for a reserve transfer or have some kind of issue in, in February. That's all. It's already voted on though, right? It's already voted. There's no motion yeah. on the table yet. I was just trying I'm to just, explain to you that why it was a safety huh? note. Reservation from last time. Well, if anybody or? else agrees with me, we could we could have a motion and revisit it. But it, I, I'm not hearing like a lot of people are unhappy about this. So it's just you know, a, it's a no safety motion. note. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Friday. you, I, we are darn close to done. So um, I, I don't want to drag it out much longer, but. This write up, did anybody notice anything on here that they have input or discussion on? Um, um, is this something, I'm sorry, I apologize. Is this something you, is, that you want us to look at because it's going to be read or because it's being handed out? This will be over? part of the packet that's handed to people for the, so this is the finance committee input when they get this, uh, you know, whatever this packet is. This will be part of that. So when packet. they get the warrant, this stuff is in there too. Exactly. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So let me see if this is okay. And it is still like it needs it's something to be edited. Right? Something's changed. Yeah. Already. So the free cash cold. request is down to one fifty seven four hundred one. Right. That um, the four thousand dollars will be crossed out, and then the. Um, free cash available for next year will be 935588 mm -hmm. What funds the cap again, sorry because I'm new to all this. What funds the capital stabilization fund? We vote from free cash to put into it. We got a year at some point. Okay. And then we yeah. take it out. We Although last year we took money out instead mm -hmm. of putting money in. And I think maybe the year before too. We yeah, we um, I, I, yeah. So we had Meaning a few years where we put money in and we had a goal of a million dollars and we're down to okay. 700,000 or something. The number's on here, yeah. 720,000. Do and municipalities ever, do we ever finance purchases like a truck as opposed to just put plump in $40,000 on it? That is not something that's done in municipalities. I'm just curious about the $40,000 wastewater treatment vehicle. Yeah, we have. I'm not trying to change that, but is that something people yeah, towns yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It winds up costing more. Well, I'm just one. Well, depending on your needs in that particular year, right? Yeah. Well, usually the borrowing cost is more than the money you lose by spending it. The reason why there's a little bit of push. I mean, the reason why there's a push on this vehicle is because. I'm not questioning that. I don't no, we don't want to talk about that. No, okay. Not, I, I wasn't. I'm <laughs> more process. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, That's one where I do a lot of yeah. discussion at uh, the town mm -hmm. meeting because everybody knows how much a truck costs. <laughs> yeah. They're different numbers. Yeah. We we just don't want to lose the opportunity to buy the forty thousand dollar vehicle and end up having to pay fifty five thousand next year, which is what they're coming in under the new um, state bid. This is the old state bid. What's the bottom future financing impact parentheses? This section needs work. The bottom yeah flip it over but that's what that's that's, the first that's it yeah okay i would uh, suggest that, that we say something more like but alter the rules governing the percentage of improvement that can be placed either on the vehicle i'm sorry julie i can't hear who's talking i'm sorry um, I said I would suggest altering the last sentence to say, but alter the rules governing the percentage of improvement costs that can be blah, blah, blah. Rather than using the term guard, remove the guard. Yeah. See, I told you that, that section, little... I got tired of writing by the time I got to this that, point. That, that, that is, does like... sort of take a position. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm good. Governing the percentage of improvement costs that can be placed. Oh, and, and it's still cool. Yeah, I mean, however you continue on. Okay. Anything else anybody has any suggestions on? I don't really want to write as a group, but if there's anything that makes you unhappy or anything that you think ought to be said that we're missing, I'm not really worried about wordsmithing. I can fix that. 
for Jim to fix it. He's better than I am. That didn't sound so nice when you put it. <laughs> oh, that sounds so much better. I guess I would just um, to revisit. Did, does it get up to a possibility of five percent on the library? When you say the expected increase due to borrowing is between three to five percent, that's the um, so that it's number is from four point seven. So so that's that number all there. Of okay. These, I mean, increase. everything is a yep. guess, right? So you don't yep. know what the percentage is going to be. You don't know what the library is going to cost. Sure. Yeah. You don't know anything. You don't right. know what the interest rate will be. Yeah. Well, I guess all I'm saying is that both those numbers have been rounded up. Um, so the expected five. increase. So you want like? Well, I'm not saying. I'm not saying what. I just was curious, wanting to make sure. But um, obviously, we don't. It doesn't get up to five percent. Um, and it could. You, it <laughs> could. But you've done such a good job of giving people options of sort of low, high, medium, and the low, high on here is, is two point eight to four point seven. All right, two point eight to four. I'm just opening the discussion, but I'm okay. saying it's you know it's a, that. yeah. And, and this nice sheet, the only one that's produced in a lot, is that going in for folks to this kind of that thing? Is, or have we done I, all our public so I, stuff? Casey, on... Casey um, the, that colored sheet, the debt library impact, what, what are we going to do with that? Is that going to be part of the handout or is that going to be separate? Do you want me to make it part of the handout? Yeah. I can do that. Yes. I think if we don't, we're going to be asked a lot of questions. So, yes. Yeah. Can you send it to me in a Word doc? Yes. And I'll just place it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think the taxpayer should see it. Yeah, I think it's a very. I think it's something that hasn't been done before, so it's a good. Um... Okay. So, I think we're done. The last thing is that um, we have a posted meeting starting at 530 on Monday. I don't think we have anything to talk about. Do we? Better to be safe than sorry. You don't all you don't have to convene if you don't need to get posted, but I see I don't see I don't really feel like we need to show up at 530 and open our meeting. Why don't we plan all plan to be there by quarter of um, and we will we'll still open a meeting so that if we have discussion during the meeting, mm -hmm. we're covered. But um, Monday, the 24th. It's Monday the twenty fourth at five forty five at it's at Frontier, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. In the auditorium. Yep. Okay. All right. I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. I move that the know? select board adjourn. Thank you, everybody. We have to I that. That. All in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. <laughs> no. Carolyn Ness, aye. Did you hear that? <laughs>